Pardon. The surgery acid metal ester. Uh, this uh, reaction is part of the synthesis uh, the drug nitrocholine. This drug is for patients with dementia or Alzheimer's disease, and it is for support his cognitive function. The interesting fact about this reaction is uh, that proceeds under the phase transfer catalysis. Here is a uh, reaction scheme. Oh, starting material, 10, 10 alpha metoxidy hydrolysergic acids. Here is structure. Uh, we call it lumen because long name. And the uh, alkylation <laughs> agent uh, is dimethyl sulfate. The phase transfer catalyst is tetraethyl ammonium hydroxide. And the products is one metal 10 alpha metoxidy hydrolysergic acid metal ester. We call it melumen. <laughs> and, uh, the, here is the main characteristic of the process. The reaction is exothermic and fast. Uh, precise reaction control is needed because the selectivity of the reaction, a high conversion is required, and continuous arrangement allows more efficient reaction control. And due to small volume, uh, the process is safer. Uh, there is a potential for food for the optimization of process. Uh, here is the supposed mechanism of the reaction. Uh, the lume uh, is deprotonate with sodium hydroxide on phase boundary. There, the uh, next step is cation exchange with tetraethyl ammonium hydroxide and transfer to the organic phase, where react with dimethyl sulfate and form melume. Uh, we tried in to two different continuous arrangement. First, with, with, first was with microchip reactor. And here is the scheme. We used syringe pumps. And for uh, observing the reaction with the digital microscope, uh, here is the photo of the uh, entire operator. The microchip reactor is here. And here is the detail because uh, the reaction volume is 10 microliters and residence time in this aperture was uh, one to five minutes. Uh, first experiment uh, was um, about effect of residence time. Uh, the, excess, the excess of DMS to Lume was 1.2. The temperature was uh, 15 degrees. And the best resident time was here, and it's a one minute, 17 seconds. We use this residence time for uh, other experiments. The next experiment was effect of temperature. Uh, the best temperature was 20 degree, be degrees, because under this temperature, uh, our small apparatus was uh, blocked by crystallization. And so we work in 20 temperatures, 20, 20, 20 degrees. Uh, then we try uh, to measure effect of, ex of excess of DMS. We measure four, four different uh, temperatures and this plot is for 20, uh, 20 degrees and optimal value was 1.2 and the conversion was 93% and selectivity 92%. Uh, then we, um, we were scaling up the apparatus, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole process and we use Miller reactor for Lonza uh, for a separatory the reaction mixer, we use separatory funnel. And here is the picture of our apparatus. Uh, the Lonza reactor has one milliliter volume, and residence time here was uh, 0.3 to 0.9 minutes. Uh, 
of course, we try to measure effect of residence time. And here was a difference uh, compared to uh, microchip reactor. It was this side products. Here is the structure. This side products is a quaternary source for, from uh, starting material. And this quaternary source is formed uh, in the reaction mixture where uh, flow rate of sodium hydroxide is low. So uh, we can try measure effect of flow rate of sodium hydroxide. Here was flow for different, uh, for different flow rates. The best was uh, increased 20% and the uh, uh, selectivity was 95%. Uh, then uh, we can increase the total flow rate for bigger, produ for bigger production. And uh, so we tried sonication of the output capillary. Uh, the, on the blood, the blonde, blue columns, so uh, is the sonication, the yellow columns is as experiment without sonication. And here is the uh, higher difference, uh, the selectivity with sonication is about 6% higher. The total flow is 6.4 milliliters per minute. So the last experiment, last results is effect of residence time when the use of sonication, the total flow is from 5.2 to 8.4 milliliters per hour. And the best uh, is flow rate 7.6 milliliters per minute, uh, where the selectivity of melanoma is same like uh, as for flow rates four milliliters per minute without the sonic tension. Uh, here is some conclusions. We tried two different type mi micro reactor. First was microchip. The production is microchip is uh, no, uh, 0 0.2 gram per hour and conventional was only 93% and selected 92%. Then we try Lonza reactor, it's milliliter reactor without sonication of output capillary, the conversion was total and the production was 11.5 uh, gram per hour. And if we uh, use the sonication of output capillary, the conversion was still total and the selectivity was 95%, but production is 22.8 uh, gram per hour. For Future, we can try sonication of the entire apparatus for process intensification at the phase interface. And thank you for your attention. So I will start. So could you please compare your reactor setup with, let's say, the classical batch reactor in terms of selectivity? The selectivity um, in, batch, uh, uh, in batch process, the selectivity is about, the yield is about 80% because uh, they, um, they must separate, separate the reaction mixture and it, was not so fast and the uh, side products starting form. Yeah. Yeah. It's better. It's, this is better. Mm -hmm. There's two types of micro reactors and in this case you observe that the optimal recitation time of one minute. But in the second case you use recitation time always smaller than so you think we can improve the, or optimize the reaction uh, in the second system is increasing? The second system, uh, I think it's better mixing in in a, in, a, in a long time reactor, and the uh, um, flow is different in 
the, I think the better mixing. And if we use the sonication, the face interface maybe is bigger for the for the reaction of less transfer. Yes. <laughs> But the principal aim is optimize the condition for the uh, reactor. Or we we or generally we choose the microchip because uh, we can try uh, flexibility of the process, and it's very small and the uh, dimethyl sulfate is toxic. So we started with this, and then we can scale it if 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 it works. But in <coughs> microchip, uh, there. Uh, there was uh, many problems with crystallization and the other. The, the long reactor is more better. No. Um, we thought from some reason that the laminar, that the, there is a laminar flow in our reactor. But you spoke about mixing. What type of mixer are you using there? Uh, here is static mixer okay. in the long reactor. Okay. It's here. Now I see. Okay. Here. Yeah, so, uh, so you make some obstacles to, to make them the same thing. And uh, the uh, the reaction mixer is to non emissible phase, and in the it's not laminar uh, flow. It's annular flow. You can see. Mm. You can see bubble some at the start, mm -hmm. and then it's changed. But in uh, in the microchip, is a bubble flow mm -hmm. in microchip. But here, here it's not. Mm -hmm. One director. It's, I think it's only the static mixes. Okay. Okay. We have time for one. Quite brief questions. How do you clean this maluma from other side product? Uh, <laughs> or this is not the case for this. Uh, we now we don't separate. Okay. And um, we uh, analyze in HPSC, but um, uh, it's done by chromatic. I don't know. Today, um, right. we don't. Now we don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay. The next presentation should be given by Miss Shalpova. And the title of her speech is Use of Photo Autotrophic Microorganisms in Bioremediation of Surface Waters. It's shared your presentation. Um, is it okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, hi, my name is Petra Mušalkova, and the uh, theme of my presentation is use of autotrophic microorganisms in bioremediation of surface waters. And it's not working. <laughs> no, why? So uh, first I will tell you something about. Uh, sorry. Uh, first, I will tell you something about eutrophication, then we will go through some solutions. I will show you the design of my solution and some of my first results. So uh, eutrophication is one of the current problem of water ecosystems. Uh, it's caused by uh, increasing usage of fertilizer, fertilizers in agriculture, uh, the pollution and the uh, human activity in general. Uh, the huge amounts of uh, nutrition, such as different forms of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, are washed to uh, waters, and these forms of nutrition are favorable.
for the seasonal harmful algae blooms. The negative consequences of these blooms are uh, toxins and uh, oxygen depletion. And this is a dangerous for human health uh, as for the uh, whole ecosystem. Uh, this is a satellite picture of uh, St. Clair's Lake, which is the twice size of Prague. And we can see the huge extent of the algal blooms. Algal bloom. <clears throat> uh, although there are some solutions for these problems, such as uh, dredging sediment, coagulation, sonication, aeration, and even control by food chain, uh, these solutions are uh, often expensive, has a limited efficiency, and introduce chemicals into the system. So uh, the aim of my uh, presentation is to uh, make an uh, alternative solution, which will use uh, the LG to solve this problem with LG. So the, uh, my solution includes the construction of a floating open bioreactor, uh, which, uh, and the design of the bioreactor will uh, enable the exchange the water between the inner inner volume and the bulk water, and this will uh, this will cause the flow of nutrients into bioreactor. In the bioreactor, there will be cultivated uh, strictly non-toxic and uh, filament filament uh, cyanobacteria, and it will uh, uptake the nutrients and make them unavailable for the harmful species. And the obtained biomass will be then uh, used as a fertilizer in the in ecological agriculture. So the terms of the solution is that uh, we need to use the non-toxic alga and the alga that forms uh, macroscopic clusters and filaments. Currently, we are using the species Tolipoptic stenuis. Then the second term is the open system with the semi-permeable septum. And also, we need to know uh, and understand uh, the flow of the nutrients, especially the uptake of phosphorus between uh, the water and, and, uh, and algae. Uh, currently, we are testing the septum uh, for the hydrodynamic resistance and for the loss of algae uh, via the septum. And I am doing the uh, cultivation experiments. Uh, the parameters of these experiments are phosphorus concentration in medium, uh, the biomass concentration, and also the length of starvation, which means the length of cultivation without phosphorus before the experiment starts. And the measured uh, quantities are uh, phosphorus concentration in medium, also phosphorus concentration in cells, and productivity. And the goal is to uh, lower the P concentration under the uh, 0.03 milligram per liter, because that's the, that's the value that is uh, generally considered as a threshold value to eutrophic waters. Uh, these are first, some of my first results. Uh, first experiments, I, I was done it in the closed system and with suspended demos. Uh, we are able to get uh, different uh, cultures uh, with a uh, different initial in uh, intracellular P concentration according to different length of starvation. And then uh, with these different cultures, uh, we were testing them for the re reduction of P concentration. So we have the uh, phosphorus concentration in time, and we can see that the culture with uh, no, no starvation has the, the slower, the slower uh, progress in the reduction, and the most starved uh, uh, culture has the fastest reduction of the P concentration in the medium. Also, uh, the reduction of uh, P concentration in medium is proportional to the biomass, con biomass concentration. So we can say, yes, it's working because the, the, lower, the lower biomass concentration has the also the birth, <laughs> slowest, uh, slowest uh, reduction and uh, the biggest uh, biomass concentration has the fastest uh, lower, lower of the concentration. And also this was for the three day starvation and also for uh, six days starvation. 
So the promising conclusions from these experiments are that the telepotric, tenu telepotric stenosis is capable of uh, lowering the phosphorus concentration under the threshold value. The rate of reduction was proportional to the, pro to the biomass concentration and that the nutrient uh, removal can be supported by starvation culture before it's uh, planted to the place it wants to lower the uh, uh, phosphorus. And for the future plants, uh, I'm uh, preparing uh, outside cultivation, also the scale up of cultivation, and there will be experiments with the real trophic waters. Thank you for your attention, and do you have any questions? Done. More questions, comments, improvements? Please. Maybe one really simple question, but how did you choose the type of algae, like non-toxic algae for all these experiments? Because you showed, you showed us uh, the exact species of, of algae, so how did you choose it? Yeah, so I choose it from the, you know, uh, we know which, which algae makes toxins and which not, so we are just uh, ordered this algae from the, from the cultivation, uh, you know, uh, the institution which have the cultivation of algae, and uh, also uh, the there has also uh, already been experiments on telepotric stenosis to in the in the use of uh, biofair fertilizer. So we we know that it was already used in this case, and we know that it uh, it has uh, big filaments and make clusters. So, but uh, we we will try some uh, some other algae and cyanobacteria, but uh, we just start with this one. We also tried trichormus, but it has uh, two small two small filaments, and it was uh, in you know all over in the in the cultivation. So, thank you. Next question. So you, you showed plenty of methods which can be used for remediation. But if you compare the price, the cost with this method currently using? Uh, the costs of this method, uh, I don't know, but uh, for sure uh, it's possible to combine these methods yeah. and have the, the, the best result, but it's always... In terms of cost? Yeah, in, in terms of cost. So, um, I think this is the this is the solution which makes the product of this solution can be used in another uh, another phase of the. So for the future, you plan to combine? Uh, we will first to try uh, just this one, and I think that uh, it it will show a good uh, good results. It it will be okay, but. I think that maybe the the mixing can be also uh, included in this solution. And this work is based on some project? Uh, no, it's the first. Uh, yes, first project. Yeah. Background. Yeah. So far. Yes. Thank you. So next question. Yes, please. Well, uh, could this be used on some large scale? Because well, I'm often going to some lakes in summer, and uh, if the lake is covered with yeah. algae, blue, you can't you can't swim. Then is there any way how to work on this large scale? That you see? Yeah, we are working on the uh, we, we will work on the on the larger scale, uh, but I think it uh, it will be you uh, know uh, there will be men mentals to material. So you know like. 10 meters to 10 meters, and then we will maybe place on a different place on the lake, something like that. Or maybe more, more of these uh, floating bioreactors at okay. the same time in under different places on the lake. Thank you. <coughs> Next question. So we have a final question. Is it possible to combine uh, this method with uh, fisheries? Fish goes out, goes uh, out, uh, this, uh, uh, this absorbed uh, phosphorus. 
uh, and the question is for uh, combine like like uh, you know uh, combine with fisheries uh, to feed the, the algae that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah to feed them uh, yeah maybe maybe it 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 could it could yeah we we, we know that uh, the the algae are already fed to fishes so fish to so maybe yes but I don't know with this species. Uh, I think that I don't know. <laughs> but we hope. Generally, yes. Generally, yes, but with this species. So, this question Did it exist the phosphorus level, which is even toxic for this bacteria? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know that. <laughs> Even for the bacteria, I don't know. They they just uh, use it and multiply. So there is always if this uh, the the phosphorus is the most of the limiting factor for the bacteria. So so I think that they maybe it will be some some uh, reduction of growth. But uh, yeah, maybe we will test it. <laughs> But I think they would be happy if they have uh, so much phosphorus. <laughs> okay. If not, thank you again. The final presentation, which should be driven by online. Yes, it's online as well because. So, <laughs> can you hear me? I don't know. Was Masoa is performing her PhD partially in France and partially here, ICPF. Uh -huh. yeah. Currently, she's in France. so. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the uh, Mansoor could could you tell a few words? Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, so as you can see, uh, her PhD topic is related to synthesis of ionic liquids and uh, their overall characterization. So shall we start? Can I start? Yes. Yes. So good morning, sir and madam. My name is Masura Sainda Sunyaza Pinajon, and today I'm going to uh, present you my results for my thesis project. And I will be focusing <coughs> the thesis of the bio-based vanilla liquid from the choline for the linear derivatization. So my director thesis are the professor Sandrine Bouquillon from the Institute of uh, Molecular Chemistry of France, and uh, the professor Magdalena Bendovo from the Institute of Chemical Process Fundamental of the CIA in Prague and also supervised by the Dr. Jean-Pierre Mbakili. So first, I'm going to speak about my thesis project and then give you some uh, generality about the unique liquids and uh, the dissolution of the lenin, and then uh, speak about my uh, results. So first, my thesis project is composed of three steps. So the first step is in the RANS at the ECMR. It's for the unique, synthesis, unique liquid uh, synthesis by the use of the biomase. Then the second step is the uh, physical chemical uh, properties. So, sorry, Masoa, yeah. can, can you please share just your presentation? Ah, you see, oh. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Not the entire desktop, but yeah. the PowerPoint presentation. Just to in in presentation mode. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Sorry. So um. Oh. 
for uh, so for the second step, it's the physical chemical properties of pure and aqueous ionic liquid. So I do that uh, in Prague for the determination of the structure and activity relationship. And the last step is the dissolution of the lignin and the extraction of the bioactive compounds. So maybe some of you are asking, what is a ionic liquid? It's a modern salt. It's an, uh, uh, it's an association of a cation and an anion. It can be organic or inorganic. So in the, in the, um, in the side of this slide, you can see example of cation. So uh, for example, ammonium, phosphonium. And for the anion, uh, it can be halogenous. Uh, also, there are an example of uh, one uh, unique liquid. So they have different physical chemical characteristics, and that depending on the nature of the cation and anion. So, for example, it can be the thermal capacity, they are not flammable, the conductivity, viscosity, uh, their low vapor pressure, the melting temperature under uh, 1, 000, uh, 100 degrees. But the most important is the, uh, that uh, they can stabilize organic or inorganic compounds and also their polarity and solubility. So uh, unique liquids have different fields of application. Of course, they can be used in chemistry, but they also can be used in energy or pharmacology. Here in this graphic, you can see the use of the unique liquids uh, in function at the time. So they are very used season, since the 1990. And uh, so we can observe um, uh, an increase of their use, then a level constant, and uh, after a decrease. Why? Because um, they have problem of toxicity, ecotoxicity, cytotoxicity, and bioaccumulation. Um, and also, there are no uh, new unique liquid discoveries since this time, but uh, this is why now there are no other unique liquids. So, uh, 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 bio-based unique liquids, and this is the main topic of my uh, thesis subject. So for the dissolution of the lignin and the extraction of injurious compounds, if you look at the literature, you can see that often we use craft lignin, alkali lignin with organic solvents has the dichloromethane or the THF. But there are also other greener uh, alternatives as the use of the unique liquids or the DES, so the DEP, of the tick solvent with high temperature and pressure. And the percentage of dissolution is up to 40%. In our lab, we have developed uh, some, uh, some uh, method. So, Here you can see example of unique liquid we have synthesized before, and uh, that has been the object of a paper, and we have a percentage of dissolution up to 65% with uh, the use of mild condition. And this is why we are thinking to uh, improve the percentage of dissolution with new bio-based unique liquid. So here, uh, the BOLA form, uh, bio, uh, the bio-based BOLA form unique liquids. And uh, now I'm going to present you my uh, result. So here, this is uh, the synthetic pathway, the first one faking. So we start with, an, uh, with um, the choline, and this uh, compounds will be engaged in an enzymatic esterification under microwave to have this ester, and this ester will be engaged in, in different anionic metathesis, and the last reaction will be a cross-catalyzed metathesis to obtain the bolar form unique liquid uh, want. So the first synthetic pathway use, like I have said before, is an enzymatic uh, esterification. So here with the lipase, and I have tried different, uh, I have tried several uh, organic solvents to stabilize the choline and it isn't a success, but it's only soluble in water, something very not very good when you want to do an esterification reaction. So we are thinking about a second synthetic pathway. So here a classic uh, esterification reaction with uh, here a uh, fatty acid, one fatty acid, so the 10 decenoic uh, acid 
with the methane sulfonic acid, the choline chloride, and the molecular sieve, and also the reaction is under vacuum to remove the water. And then there are uh, an anionic metathesis with the sodium perchlorate. So we obtain the ester with a yield of, uh, uh, of uh, 46%. Uh, then another anionic metathesis to change the chloride into lactate. And here we obtain these compounds. And after this compost is engaged in the in the direction of a press uh, metathesis, but the lax reaction doesn't hurt. And also we have made some difficulty to eliminate the starch materials during uh, all the, the different uh, treatments. So we have taken about a third synthetic pathway. So we just uh, switch the last and uh, the first and the last step of the reaction. So we start with uh, the um, uh, fatty acid with a terminal uh, a terminal uh, acid function, and after so we have uh, the gross catalyze uh, gross catalyst uh, with uh, zero point zero zero five equivalence. We use anhydrous uh, dichromethane, and so uh, we have uh, we obtain the D acid here, and then we have a desterification and an anionic metathesis, and another one to have the final target components. So uh, to, data, to do that, I have done a kinetic study of the DSC C20 with the groups one and two. So here in this slide, you can see the structure of the groups one and the group two, and the general um, the general um, equation reaction. So for the first test, I have done it with uh, so the groups one, and I have a conversion of uh, sixty eight percent and a yield of forty two. Persons. Uh, so I done it uh, with the ten uh, decenoic acid, and then I have tried another. I have done another test with the groups two, and I have better results. So here, uh, so um, ninety three uh, percent uh, of conversion and forty eight percent for the yale. So the groups two is a better uh, catalyst to do the reaction. After this, we have tried to uh, do an extraction of the process to over fatty acid. So I have done this on the, the four pantenoic acid to do the synthesis of the acid C8. And so we have a conversion near to 80%. So here you can see the NMR of these compounds. After this, I have tried to improve the reaction, so the time. So uh, how to do this? Its uh, direction is uh, done under a microwave. So the time of reaction is limited to one hour compared to 24 hours when I did it with the groups uh, one uh, like uh, before. So here in this table, you can see the various position states for the reaction under microwave. So uh, the best results have been uh, done with the groups one used at the border. Uh, with uh, for the condition under vacuum and uh, argons. And so we have a conversion of 86%. And for the, and I've so done with the, for, with the groups two as a border for the synthesis of the C8 uh, D acid. And I have a conversion of uh, 50%. So after this, when I have, uh, so my uh, D acid, I, uh, the compound is engaged in the reaction of desulfurication, anionic metathesis, then an over one. And so with the uh, the acid, with the C20 D acid, I have obtained this uh, compounds and it was uh, analyzed by LMR. So for the esterification as anionic metathesis, with the classic heating, we have uh, made some difficulty to solvelize the compounds for the anionic metathesis to exchange, um, so the anion perchlorate to a nut. So we are picking to swipe this step and to exchange directly the chloride to lactate and the work in projects. And I also tried the reaction uh, under microwave. The certification uh, was efficient for the formation of the DSTR C20 with co good conversion and the uh, time uh, more short, but we also made some difficulty to isolate and purify the compounds, and the reaction doesn't work for the C8 D acid. 
So I have also done a monocatenal unique liquid from the linoleic acid. And here you can see the synthetic pathway. So it's the same uh, thing. Uh, we always do the esterification when the unique metathesis, but uh, for the last compound, uh, the yield is not already determined. So to conclude, I have uh, synthesized three new unique liquids. So um, uh, two monocatena and one volaform with a good yield and sustainable quantity. And think one thing very good, it's, uh, it's that we can improve with microwave. Also uh, in June, I hope to come uh, in Prague and I will uh, do the thermodynamic, uh, the exper thermodynamic experiment of a bio-based unique liquid and mixture with water. So uh, we will uh, do some experiment to collect measurements at the, the density, the thermal capacity, the enthalpy, melting point on pure unique liquid for the moment after the on the unique liquid mixed with water to uh, determine the relationship between the structure and activity. And also we'll use the POSMO RS model and the spectrometry method, uh, spectrometry and spectroscopy method. Uh, and also we'll use the differential uh, scanning uh, calorie method uh, to see the depolymerization of the, of the lenin to uh, select and uh, choose the uh, find the better uh, unique liquid to do uh, the dissolution of the linin. So thank you. I would like to thank Jean-Pierre uh, Mbakidi, the Dr. Magdalena Bendova, and the Professor Sandrine Bouquillon for their uh, educational uh, support and also the ECMR staff. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Masson, for your nice presentation. And now we have time for maybe two, three questions from the audience. Yes. Please. Hello, thank you for a nice talk. Uh, one of your first slides, you mentioned that you achieved uh, about 93% conversion, while the yield was only 48%. Does it mean there are some side products? Have you determined? What type of side products are there, or did I misunderstood it? I don't hear the question. Maybe, uh, guys, uh, maybe go to the yeah. computer to ask the question. Excuse me, I have to go to the PC. Mm -hmm. Would you hear me now? Yeah. Very good. So, one of the first slides. This one? This or the, maybe next one, I think, with the groups two. You mentioned you have 93% conversion and yield 48%. Did I understand well that it means there are some side products? Uh, no, there are no side products, but it was the first time I do the reaction. So I lost the product during the treatment. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to I'm, uh, restart all to uh, improve my yields. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now I understand very well. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question? So, so I have one question. What is the typical volume of uh, ionic liquids which you are able to synthesize? Typical volume of the final product. Ah, the final pro, uh, yes. final ionic liquid. Uh, the volume of my uh, unique liquids? Yes. Uh, for the moment, I have, um, I think. Uh, approximately. Approximately more than uh, 10 uh, email. For the moment, they are still in the balloon, but uh, I have more than uh, 10 grams of uh, each uh, uh -huh. of each uh, compound, and I think I'm uh, I'm uh, around uh, the 10, uh, 50, uh, uh, 15 uh, ml of uh, unique liquids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any question, comment? If not, I would like to thank again Masua.
for the presentation. And I think it's time for the concluding speech of chair, chair lady of the conference. That, that's not, not, not going to be a speech. I would like to just thank you for being here today, this morning. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow for the whole day of, uh, uh, of presentations. We decided to split these into two days because there were there are quite a lot of you. So uh, we have to think of the jury who needs to take all this in. I would like to remind you that you can vote for the best presentation of some of your uh, of co-disciples. So uh, just be free to do so. I'll put some slips of paper back there and tomorrow by the afternoon, you can start voting and pick your uh, your best presentation, and then we'll compare it with the decision of the jury. So we'll see how how this compares. If you have the same opinion as we do, okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy lunch, and see you tomorrow. Thank you.